Hi, I'm Ingrid Jansen. Hi, I'm Judy Denny. And we're from the Canadian Peony Society. Today we're going to talk to you about digging, dividing, and planting herbaceous peonies. A herbaceous peony is one that puts on its foliage and flowers in one season and then dies back in the fall. This is the peony we are going to be digging today. This is called Eliza Lundy. And we're going to start by cutting back the foliage. Using sterilized tools, we're going to cut the foliage, leave a, a good amount of stem that we can then use as a handle. So we're going to start taking this back. And as you can see, we want to be cutting so that we have about 10 to 15 centimeters of, uh, of stem here. And we can see the center of the plant. And when you, it's good gardening practice to cut back peony foliage in the fall anyway, and you should uh, dispose of it in your uh, yard waste. And that just helps to prevent the buildup of uh, fungal spores around the crown of your plant. So now we can actually see the peony that we want to dig, um, and we can switch over to our shovels and forks. So what you want to do is look for the crown which is the center of the peony. And you want to start a good, I would say, a foot, 30 centimeters away from the crown. And you're going to cut in a straight line down around the crown of the plant in a circle all the way around that crown. You may sever a few roots. Not, do not worry about that. We'll get the, hopefully we'll get the bulk of the root to come out. So as you can see, I'm going to dig all the way around the crown, straight down. And then once we've gotten all the way around, we're going to start trying to remove some of the soil so that we can start to see the root structure a little bit. So we can already see there's a nice big root there. We want to come back around again in the same place where I've already cut. I'm going to start trying to put a bit of leverage on it, okay? So I'm going back around in the same circle. And now I'm going to use my shovel as a lever. And, whoop, there we go. It's starting to shift a bit. pop. That's all right. We're going to break a few roots, remember? Okay, it's starting to come loose now, so I think what we're going to do is see if between the two of us we can just lift this out, or at least lever it more out of the ground. You got it? Okay. Oh, I think I need to get a better angle. Walk it a bit. Perfect. Perfect. So now we're going to try, see, we can use these stems that we left as handles. And what we're going to do is just try and rock a little bit of that. Oh, oh dear. We broke some biggies. Yes, we did break a large root off. But that, that root is way too big. We would have cut most we of it down anyway. This is a good size plant with a lot of roots, so we will be fine. So now we can actually see the root structure of this peony, which is great. We've got some of the loose dirt. It has rained here, so the soil is a bit damp. Uh, if you're fortunate and it's been a dry fall, it should come off fairly easily. But what we're going to do now that we've got it loose is we're going to take it over to our washing station and we're actually gonna wash the root down and that'll help us to actually see the complete root structure and it'll help us to identify the places where we want to cut it. Okay, we're going to give our peony that we just dug up a wash in a nice tub of water. Um, we're just going to kind of give it a bit of a swirl to start loosening that soil. We want that water to penetrate in there. You can do this in a tub of water like this if you, um, if you have one. Um, if not, you can also use a hose, and we do have, uh, we, have we have a hose handy if we need to use it. Oh, there's a nice stone. <laughs> okay, that's 
start working away at that. So, so it's reaching underneath and getting rid of as much of the soil gently as we can without breaking off any roots. And the benefit of washing your root completely like this, or at least as much as possible, is that it will allow you to see the detail of the root structure. If you could just under there? tip it up just out of curiosity, yeah. Can you see under there? There's a lot of dirt still on this side. Eliza's been growing in that space for probably 15 years, so she's big. So this is um, if you have, you know, grandma's old peonies that you want to dig up from the garden um, and, you know, they've, they've been in place for a while, this is the kind of situation that you'll probably find. If it's a peony that's only been in place for a few years, the root will probably not be as extensive as this one is, but this gives you an idea. I think we've got, I'm going to take the hose to this, yep, okay? I agree. Beware the hose. Here we go. So they are quite fragile, so you do need to be careful as you handle this and move it around. So you want to try and leave as many of the roots as you can, the larger roots, intact at this point. We've basically got our root nicely cleaned off and we're going to take it back to our table where we're going to start looking at how we can divide this. Here we have our washed peony root and now we can have a really good look at the structure of this peony. And as I said, as we were washing it, you can now see the eyes or buds. Those will become next year's leaves, um, stems and flowers. And so we wanna make sure we know the location of those because what we're going to try to do at this point is take this very large peony root and divide it into portions that have what we call three to five eyes, or those are typically the healthy divisions that we want to see. So as I'm looking at this, of course, the older part of the peony, the crown as we call it, is right here in the middle, but I can see a side section here that has some, uh, a good five or six eyes on it. And I also have a section here that looks, if I cut it, would have a good number of eyes. And then after that, we can see how we would divide the rest of it. So the tools we're gonna to use for this, we have our clean secateurs. I also have a pair of sharp scissors. Um, and for the woodier part of this, you may need uh, some kind of a saw or a root knife. I have a root knife here. And again, as with trimming back the foliage, you wanna make sure that your tools are clean and uh, sterilized. So I'm going to try and start, oh, there's another broken root, my goodness. Poor old Eliza, she's taking a beating today. I'm gonna try and wiggle this to see if I can see where that might come free. And I'm gonna start working away at some of the woodier portions here because while I do want the division, I also want to make sure that it comes off with a nice healthy piece of peony root. So in order to do that, I'm gonna start trimming back a lot of these smaller roots. Um, and this is okay, um, as long as you have nice big healthy uh, roots that are at least a good half inch to an inch, two and a half to five centimeters that will be enough to keep the divisions going. So I'm gonna try and just go all around. And the other thing you should look for is any of the roots that you broke as you dug it, you might wanna look at those and look at that one's been broken. So I'm probably gonna trim that back. See in this one as well. So give it a good clean cut. So I might start with um, the division over here on this side first. So I'm going to take my saw and see if I can work it down in between here for this first division. Um, I can feel how woody that particular piece is. Okay. So, oh, what's interesting is that some of the roots are growing on top of other roots, and so that makes it a little bit of a challenge to see where you can actually try and cut them apart. I'm going to cut.
cut this one here. There we go. Oh, see now, that wasn't what I planned, but unfortunately that's some of what will happen. You will end up with small divisions like that. And you can decide what you want to do with some of the small divisions. As you can see, this one has about two eyes on it. I would call it more like a one and a half because one is a very small secondary bud. And I'm going to have to saw through an older piece of root here in order to sever this one off. Challenge. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, I think we can see this now, where it's connected, where it's coming loose. Why did we pick Eliza? <laughs> My goodness me. Okay, I have to go right through that one, unfortunately. So, we have our division here. As you can see, this is our first division. I'm gonna clean it up a bit, but I want to show you uh, what our division looks like. We have one, two, three, four, five, and various secondary, so five big, fat, healthy ones um, that will probably be next year's flowers if we do this right, and some secondary buds that are a little deeper down. Uh, important to note the placement of the buds, especially for when we um, go to plant it back. So I'm going to do a quick clean up on this again. We want to make sure that we take away a lot of these smaller roots because they'll die off in the winter anyway. So we're going to clean that up, have a good healthy division there. What do you think, Judy? That's good? Okay. Now I'm going to go back and see if I can work this second division here. Again, trying to keep a nice healthy piece of root that will support, oh, and this one's going to, so there, we have our next division. And again, you can see this one has three, uh, two on this side, one here, and a fourth um, eye right there. So, um, and a small piece that's coming off that has no eyes. And again, we're just gonna trim that up. Any of the roots that have been broken along the way, just trim those back. And as long as you have nice big pieces of root like that, um, when it goes back in the ground, um, we should get good blooms from that next year. So now we're left with, this is the older part of the peony and you can see it gets quite woody in the middle. That's quite typical. Peonies are very long lived plants so they will get quite uh, woody in the center. So I think we've done the divisions that we can do and the remainder of this root as Judy has said is probably going to go back into the ground the way it is. These are going to be, and you can sort of see the line on the stems as well, they're going to be that scant inch, inch and a half, uh, two and a half to four centimeters below the surface of the soil, okay? It's very important that these are planted no deeper than that in order to make sure that we get bloom next year. You don't have to do this in your own garden, but if you want to remember what your peony root is, it's a good idea to place a tag on the root. And as you can see, we've written, Judy's written the name on this uh, tag, and we're just going to wrap that around the root. And the reason we're putting that on the root and why it's going to be in the ground is because even if you use permanent marker, those labels tend to fade. So that in the future, if we dig Eliza back up and we've forgotten what she is, we will know. So that's a good idea. So I'm gonna place it in the hole. We've amended it slightly with um, a bit of compost. And just to show that we're planting this at the right level, I'm just gonna put a stick across to show me that um, those eyes are going to be at the right level. So I might have to just adjust the soil here just to make sure that they're kind of in the right spot. And that's good. So now we're ready that we've placed the, the root in the hole. We're ready to start backfilling. And what you want to do 
we've washed all of that soil that was right in between all of those roots. So you want to start putting the soil back in and work it into those gaps in between the roots. Why do you want to do that? We want to eliminate any potential air pockets from this as much as possible, right? Um, if your soil is really dry, you might want to water the hole that you're going to plant your peony in ahead of time. The day before is a good time, just you know, give it a good soaking so that when you come to plant your peony, your soil is nice and moist. As you can see, we've had rain for the last few days and we're getting rain again this afternoon, so we won't need to actually give this a supplementary watering. And once you've actually got it um, done, you can start filling in around. And as you put the soil back in, you wanna be firming as you go. You wanna make sure that that soil is nice and firm around that root. So now we're getting up to the crown here. And as you can see, we're going to just cover those eyes up. I'm gonna get the shovel because this is gonna take all day without a shovel. So now that we've got the soil pretty much where we want it, we can just come back in and just with your hands, I don't recommend doing this with your boots as you would for say a, a woody shrub or something. You just wanna come back in and firm that soil right down around that crown. And there you go, one planted peony. So here we have an Ito or intersectional peony. And the reason I wanna show you this is planting this one is gonna be a little bit different from uh, the herbaceous peony, which was uh, Eliza Lundy. And because this is a cross between a herbaceous peony and a tree peony, it tends to get buds much higher up the stems. And so that confuses people because you don't have, you will have eyes on the crown, as you can see, we, we have some eyes here, um, but we do have eyes that go further up the stems as well. So what I would do differently with an intersectional peony is that I would plant it a little bit deeper. So some of these lower eyes on the stems here are actually covered with, you know, two and a half to four centimeters, one, and, one to one and a half inches of soil. So here you can see I have buds that have come partway up this stem, but I have other buds that are deeper down. So planting it a little bit deeper will not prevent it from blooming and it will help to actually uh, keep those buds from uh, dying off in the winter. The ones that are at the very ends of the stems way up here, um, we're just going to ignore those. They may survive depending on the kind of winter, but they will likely um, die during the winter anyway, and that's fine. You'll treat it just like a herbaceous peony and you can come back and trim that stem back the following year. We hope you have enjoyed our video today on digging, dividing and planting peonies. If you have any questions, you can contact us via the Canadian Peony Society website. If you would like to purchase bare root peonies, there is a list of Canadian vendors on the CPS website. If you become a member of the Canadian Peony Society, you can have access to the members' root sale as well.